Sajjad Rahmana from the University of California, Davis, who will be discussing Ring BFT, Resilient Consensus Over Sharded Ring Technology. Thanks, Jonathan, for introduction, and thanks, for Yella, for interesting uh, uh, talk. Uh, I'm Sajjad Rahmana. Today, I'm going to talk about Ring BFT, uh, Resilient Consensus Over the Sharding Ring Topology. This work has been done with my colleagues, Suyash, Rohan, Dhruv, and Mohamed Sadhuri from the Exploratory System Lab at University of California, Davis. Uh, let me uh, get a little bit of background and chronology of consensus for you. Uh, the first practical Byzantine consensus protocol was PBFD that relies on three phases of communication came out in 1999. Uh, we tried to use a speculative execution to reduce a phase in our previous work called PoE. And after that, we even moved a scalability further with paralyzing the consensus with our RCC protocol. The next step, we did GOVFT to scale even to the van area with the global consensus. And the question would be, what would be the next step? One open avenue would be moving from a costly, fully replicated consensus protocol to a sharded uh, consensus protocol. Uh, in a replicated uh, system, uh, in a replicated consensus protocol, communication among all the nodes are required mostly. But in the consensus, in the sharded consensus environment, there are two types of um, consensus. The first one would be a single shard consensus, which, be, which would be the common between most uh, uh, sharding consensus protocol, which is cheap and parallelized. And the next one, which is the focus of this work would be the multi-shard or cross-shard transaction, which is the main challenge uh, of uh, consensus uh, sharding consensus protocols uh, and also expensive and required expensive communication among the shards. Uh, for our related work, uh, there are several interesting sharding consensus protocol in Byzantine environment. We picked two uh, recent related to the database community uh, to compare with our work. The first one is attested hyperledger or AHL, which has been published in Sigmund 19, which relied on a reference committee. Uh, to handle and run and coordinate cross chart transaction. When a request from the client comes, reference committee is responsible to coordinate with the other, with the all involved chart and requires multiple rounds of all to all communication between the reference committee and all the nodes. The next related work would be the sharper that has been published in Sigma 21, which runs an instance of PDFT among all the involved chart and also requires multiple rounds of all to all communication like PDFT. Uh, among all uh, replicas uh, in the system. In the previous work, there's a, uh, uh, there's a, a mightly uh, overlooked problem when it, it comes to the multi-region or van area. When there are different shards in different areas in the world, uh, we all know there's a limited bad bandwidth between these shards, and this bandwidth would be a kind of bottleneck. And when the number of, the number of messages grows and there are all to all communication in the cross shard transaction, Queuing delay and message processing will also be a kind of uh, bottleneck for uh, the cross shard uh, transaction. Our protocol called Green BFT uh, is a topology over sharding consensus protocol, which relies on three easy and simple steps process, forward, retransmit, and do this in all involved chart going around the ring without any all to all communication. The first phase of uh, our ring BFT protocol, which called process, is actually uh, running an instance of PBFT locally to order uh, the cross shard transaction in the first shard in the ring. And after doing that, we, uh, the, the next step would be the forward, forwarding the results of PBFT or the consensus uh, of the previous shard to the next shard and going through the ring and in the next round, executing the transaction, the cross shard transaction in the next round. Now let's dive deep into uh, our ring BFT protocol and its architecture. Imagine that we have four shards in four different regions in the world. And there's a cross shard transaction that touches data in all, uh, our, in all of these four shards. A client uh, sends a request in the first involved shard in the ring with the order. Uh, First, the primary of first shard will uh, run a BF, an instance of PBFD or a, a, a consensus protocol to order a transaction in the first shard. And after doing the consensus, the replicas inside the first shard will forward their transact their the results of consensus uh, with a minimal intercluster communication that I will be explaining later to the next shard. And after that, the next shard would do a, 
an instance of consens uh, consensus to order the transaction locally, going to the next chart and going all to all the involved chart through the ring. And after uh, it reaches to the final chart in the ring, the decision has been made. And in the next round through the ring, execution can happen in all the involved chart. Uh, as Yele uh, described the cluster sending solution uh, for the inter-cluster communication in this environment, uh, we use the minimal uh, global linear communication between our shards. So for example, if we have two shards here and we want to send a results of local agreement PBSD in the previous shard to the next shard, we use uh, the linear pattern of communi communication which is one-to-one -one communication between the first chart to the next chart. And this communication would be the results or commit certificate of previous uh, of the consensus instance in the previous chart. So uh, after this phase of uh, global linear communication, in order to make sure that everybody in the second chart has gotten uh, the results of previous chart, we do another local cheap round of communication. So in comparison between this round and previous round, this uh, local round is uh, cheap communication. And after that, they wait for a uh, comment certificate. So now let's get into the recovery uh, scenarios. Uh, what would we do uh, if uh, bad things happen, if the failure happens? We have three recovery scenarios. The first one would be local timer or local failure. For if for any reason the primary of each shard in handling cross shard transaction failed uh, to replicate or order the transaction locally in their uh, uh, in their cluster, uh, the local timer will expire and the nodes inside that chart inside that cluster will do a view change to replace the primary. The next recovery scenario is uh, when uh, there is no communication between two shards. This can happen for a lot of reasons for the uh, network being bad or for any other, for faulty nodes or any other thing. If there is no communication between uh, two shards for sending commit certificate or results of the consensus protocol, the transmit timer expires and the nodes inside shard one after reaching the commit state they keep retransmitting uh, their, the results of their consensus to the next chart uh, when the transmit timer expires. Uh, the last recovery scenario is when there's a partial communication. The partial communication will also can happen for uh, multiple reasons. First would be the communication is lost, the primary, uh, the nodes inside the first chart are faulty, they are preventing to send messages to the next chart or any other reason. Uh, in that case, uh, the um, if there is not enough certificate in the second chart, the remote timer in the second chart will expire and they will ask for a remote view change in the previous chart. With this one, uh, with this uh, scenario, which is the, the last uh, recovery scenario, we can initiate a view change in the previous chart. One uh, very interesting aspect of our ring DFT protocol is to handle interdependent transactions. There are few, or uh, I can say a few, a number of, uh, uh, sharding consensus protocol that looks at interdependent transaction. By interdependent transaction, we mean when uh, the execute the partial execution of the transaction, multi-shard transaction in different shard requires a partial data from the previous shard. Ring BFT allows you to do that. Uh, as I explained before, in the first round, the consensus happens in each shard, and then second round, the execution happens. And in the second round, when we are going through the ring, we can execute our partial, uh, each shard can do their partial execution and send the required data to the next shard and going through the ring, uh, all the data would be available for our shard to execute partially. So we can handle interdependent transactions. We have implemented our ring DFT protocol in a resilient DB, uh, which is open source uh, permission blockchain fabric. Uh, you can take a look at resilientdb.com. The resilient DB architecture is, has two part the interface and the blockchain core. We have implemented the ring DFT protocol inside the blockchain, uh, inside the blockchain core, uh, which has a very sophisticated parallel and multi uh, structure with having uh, different input threads, batching constant threads and execution threads and also output threads, having underlying different uh, uh, storage layers uh, for our resilient DB. 
Uh, we have uh, evaluated WingDFD on uh, Resilient DB deploying on Google Cloud, scaling up to 540 replicas. Each of them has 16 core with 16 GB memory. Uh, the reason that we didn't go up uh, at more than 540 nodes was that the Google Cloud wouldn't uh, give us uh, the quota to do so. Uh, we have deployed Resilient DB on 15 different regions, as you can see the names of the region on the right side. To, and we fixed the setting to 20 replicas per region with 15 regions. And we also shuffled the shards to prevent shard proximity. The first evaluation uh, would be the impact of the number of shards. We fixed the number of nodes in each shard and we kept increasing the number of shards. And as you can see in the left, in the left graph, that's showing the throughput of three protocols, ring DFT, Sharper, and AHL. As you can see, the throughput of ring DFT is not decreasing at all. And that's because the level of replication and the communication in each shard is not changing when you increase the number of shards. And that does not apply to uh, at a set hyper ledger or sharper because by increasing the number of shards, the pattern of communication grows quadratically and uh, it would uh, be bottleneck. Uh, and the reason that AHL is the least one is that the reference committee is the bottleneck for, uh, for at a set hyper ledger. Our next evaluation would be on the uh, impact of cross shard workload. How, uh, when we increasing the cross shard workload, uh, how would be the uh, the performance of these three protocols? And as you can see, when we have uh, zero cross shard throughput, we have reached uh, one million transaction per second on five hundred and forty nodes uh, in fifteen different regions. And as we increase the cross shard workload, uh, all three protocols goes down. Uh, but as you can see, we have ring DFT is doing twenty times better than. Uh, AHL and four times better than Sharper. Up to now, uh, we uh, we scaled our BFT consensus to the sharded consensus even more uh, using the Ring BFT protocol. The next step for a scaling Byzantine consensus to even more could be hybrid consensus, reconfigurable consensus, or SGX accelerated consensus. Thanks everybody for listening. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. You can take it over, Jonathan.